My favourite way of colouring artwork has to be using the Live Paint paint bucket. And if you want to follow me along, I'm in livepaintgapsclosed.ai, which is in the colouring artwork folder. And what I'm going to do here is use this paint bucket to paint my character. Now, the traditional way of colouring items in Illustrator is to select them and then select a colour to apply to them. Now, you have to select individual layers and individual items in order to do that. The nice thing about the Live Paint Bucket tool is you can just move over your image and select different areas to paint. Now here, it pays to work in isolation mode because you'll see that it's very easy to accidentally select the wrong layer because the Paint Bucket will allow you to just click and paint on any item you see. Now, I've got white selected at the moment, but if I select orange for my Paint Bucket and I click on his hair, you'll notice that it changes his hair to orange. And without selecting anything else, I can go to his arm and paint his arm orange or his tie. It's quite difficult to select his tie because it's behind the arm layer, though. So we'll do the other arm. Now, the reason I want to go into isolation mode is because of that problem with overlapping areas. But first of all, I'm going to work on the head. I don't really have that problem there. So I'm just going to colour his hair. Now, it's picked up and fixed a lot of gaps, but that means that we probably have more gaps than we realised we had. These are now included as gaps, so the paint stops within these areas. So you have to do a few clicks to get all of his hair done. So we've got his hair nice and bright orange. Now, this is a Scottish character. It's John Logie Baird, so that's why I've done him with nice bright orange hair. I'm also going to open my skin tones panel, which I can get by going into my swatches panel clicking on the wing menu and going to open swatch library and let's find our skin tones. Here we go. So I'm just going to use flat skin tones for him. And as I said, he's Scottish, so he'll be quite pale. So we'll give him a nice pale skin tone and click on all the areas that we would expect to be flesh colored. So there we haven't done his hands yet. So we've just got his face at the moment being flesh colored. Now, don't forget these little gaps here. Just here, we'll have a bit of skin behind his glasses. On this side of his glasses, we should have nothing. So I'm going to choose no fill and no stroke and just click on that area there. Now you may need to zoom in here to be able to get that little bit there. Okay. So once we get onto the jacket and the arm, it's a bit more difficult because we start accidentally selecting the wrong areas. Well, first of all, what I'm going to do is just choose a colour for the jacket. So let's go to our swatches again and let's have a look through. We've got skin tones. Here we've got our brights. I think we might use a have a green jacket or maybe a grey jacket. Let's start with green anyway. So I'm going to choose green and I'm going to click on his arm and actually that is a little bit too bright. So I'm going to go in here back into my swatches and into the swatch library menu and I'm going to choose some gradients but some neutral gradients. OK, so we'll choose a nice grey colour, I think, and click on there. And again, it's a little bit too strong, so I may want to just edit my gradient. So go to my gradients palette and just double click that and make it a little bit darker, that grey. So we're going from a very dark grey to a kind of mid grey colour. OK, and I'll click on that again. So we've now got a darker gradient. OK. And now I'm going to click on this arm. So we've got both arms. And again, we could edit that gradient if we wanted to. I'm not going to bother here at the moment. And then we click on different parts of the jacket to start colouring them in as well. OK, but when it gets to here, I can't actually select that part of the jacket. You see the problem I'm having? I'm either selecting the head, which I don't want to colour, or the arm, which I don't want to colour. I can't actually select that jacket colour. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the jacket by going to my layers panel and it's this layer here. And then I'm going to choose the selection tool and just double click the jacket to go into isolation mode. And that makes it much easier for me to now use the paint bucket tool just to fill in these other areas of the jacket. OK, now while I'm in there, I might as well do the tie and the shirt as well. So I'm going to go back to here and choose some nice bright colours. So let's choose green for the tie. So we'll do a nice green tie. And then we'll choose a nice yellow for the shirt. OK, so he's got a very dull jacket, but a nice bright shirt. 
Okay, and then we want to do the trousers after that, but there's a little bit of the jacket still to do here. And for this, I'm just going to choose a dark grey colour and fill in that section there. In fact, let's go even darker and fill in that section there. Now, for the trousers. So now what we're going to do is come out of isolation mode by just jumping back a couple of stages so that we can now select the trousers. We're now going to go down to the legs layer. And again, I'm going to select it, so I'm going to toggle back to my selection tool by holding down the command key or control key on PC. And I'm going to click on that and then double click to go into isolation mode. And isolation mode means that I can select this without having to worry about selecting the background layer. So I'm going to choose a red swatch and colour them red. And then I'm going to edit that a little bit later. In fact, let's not edit it later. Let's do it now. Let's choose a better colour. I'm going to choose potato. OK, so we've now got potato trousers or pants, as you guys say in the US. In fact, if I want to add just a plain colour, maybe I just want to add a regular swatch. So I'm going to go to my swatch library and just open up earth tones. So I've got some nice brown colours and I'm actually just going to click and colour these brown. Now, the nice thing about doing that is it's giving me some alternatives that I can choose to just apply to the layer without having to go through lots and lots and lots of different swatches panels, I can use my colour guide to help me choose the colour that I want. Now we'll also use that to choose some colours for the shoes. So I'm going to choose a the colour there for the sole and let's choose another one there for the shadow bit of the sole. And then we can right click on here and say exit isolation mode and zoom out to see our painted character. OK, now the nice thing about live paint is it really allows you to experiment with colour and paint in a way that you couldn't do with just using regular selections and swatches. So I really recommend playing with live paint to get the most out of it.